left. Um, I am going to talk really fast. How does that sound? <laughs> okay. The last thing I wanted us to talk about is, um, so you've learned that fear is in the future, so now you are present. You know what to do to ground yourself, to be present in the moment. So let's talk about how to capture those thoughts and change them into power thoughts for you, okay? So if I was to tell you, you guys are going to be given a two minute talk, well, you'll be giving a two minute talk, and I'm giving you the topic you're choosing. You're not choosing it, I'm choosing it for you. And Cynthia, you are gonna be talking on um, how to fix a car. <laughs> and you'll be uh, talking on how to uh, feed a Doberman pincher who's mad at you. <laughs> and you're gonna, you know, like. Over the fence. <laughs> Good job, Good. You'll be talking about um, how to fly a plane. Uh, it, Okay, now fill yourself. What's going on inside? When I'm saying you are going to be in charge of this, you will be doing a talk. Where are your thoughts going? Just call it out. Trying to plan. Trying to plan. What was your initial reaction of you are going to be giving a talk? Fine. Uh -oh. <laughs> Some of us are fine. Some of us are okay with that. Yeah. We're just searching yeah. out what do we know about that topic. Okay. Right. Because right. others uh -huh. would be right. going, I can't be talking. I can't. Some people are like, there's no way I'm going to get in front of this group. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll be running out the door first. And other people are like, okay, this will be a challenge. Let's do it. You know? Or, oh, yeah, I got that. My husband, he's a professor, so he doesn't get worried talking and running away with me and you. So when I was preparing for tonight, my thoughts were going crazy. I was like, what if I'm a complete idiot? What if I say something stupid? What if they you know, think that I don't know what I'm talking about? Like, all these thoughts, just negative, 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 and I was catastrophizing everything. Um, and that's what happens when we are feeling anxious. We tend to overestimate the end result. We assume it's going to be catastrophic. It's the end of the world. And that's pretty normal, right, when we're feeling anxious. Especially or, if you're between 13 and 17. Of course. <laughs> and on one hand, you don't blame them because these are new situations. And their hormones are raging, and that just messes them all up. And so they don't, I mean, it's easy for us to say, don't worry, you'll get through your first date. Don't worry, you'll, you know, because we have that experience behind us where this is all brand new to them. So, yeah. Um, well, we, but I, I agree. Yeah. Um, we also tend to overestimate, uh, overestimate the probability, and we assume that it's 100% probability. Like when I had that thought of, they're never going to ask me to speak again, I'm assuming they're never going to ask me to speak again. Right? Rather than um, thinking more of, okay, I might mess up from time to time. I might say something silly. They might laugh at me. But what's the worst that can happen? And one of the things you can do to help kind of walk you through that is ask yourself, well, what's the worst that can happen? And for some people, that works really well. Um, and some people, it doesn't so much. And sometimes it depends on the situation. Um, if it's something that I'm terrified about, um, I would say about 50% of the time it works. And I actually have to have someone else walk me through it and not walk me through it. Um, when my husband walks me through it, he's so darn logical that I'm like, fine, you're right, that was a silly little thought. <laughs> I was overreacting. Um, but when my girlfriends do it with me, they tend to have to walk me a little bit better with holding my hands a little bit more. So you can go, what is the worst case scenario? Another thing you can do is you can say, well, what would that mean? And this is the this is the million dollar question to ask. Well, what would that mean? Okay, so let me capture my thought. Um, they're never going to ask me to talk again. Well, what would that mean? Um, well, that would mean that um, I must be a bad speaker. Well, what does that mean? Um, well, that means that I don't know my stuff. Well, what does that mean? Um, well, that um, means that um, I must not have studied very hard <laughs> in school. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means I was a good partier. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and you just dissect it more and more until you get to the root of the issue. And a lot of times it goes back to how much we love ourselves and accept ourselves. And when my husband was having panic attacks, he thought it was related to his mom's um, cancer. 
But when he really analyzed it and got to the heart of it, he realized that he had a hard time loving himself because things were not going well at work and he was associating his self-esteem with work, which is easy to do. And he started questioning his love for himself. Am I worthy of love? And a lot of times when you ask, well, what would that mean to me? You can get to the heart of it. It's hard business to go that route. And sometimes you need someone to walk you through it. And if you need the name of a counselor or a couple counselors, I am more than happy to email you a list of some counselors who can help walk you through it because it is a scary road to really get at the heart of what that anxiety is. But as far as right now and what we can do, what our group is, because we're not therapists, we're not even going to go down that road, what you can do is when you capture those thoughts, there are three questions you 